Hey everyone, today we're gonna finish up the button that we were working on in the last video and make it truly special. The button we created is good, and that's where a lot of people tend to stop. However, if you play around with it enough, you start to notice inconsistencies and edge cases that don't quite work on all the different browsers, especially weird things happening on mobile. What sort of problems? One, the focus visible state is not consistently applied. Number two, on mobile devices like iOS, when you long hold a button, it selects all the text. Number three, tapping the button on a mobile device will trigger its hover state, but then it won't unhover until you tap somewhere else. Number four, tapping the button and then sliding your finger off it on a mobile device doesn't cause it to unhover. On native devices, when you tap and slide your finger off it, it cancels the button and the button experience reflects that. That doesn't happen here. Number five, the same thing happens with the mouse. When you click it and then move the mouse off it, it doesn't actually exit the full focus state. To fix all of these small inconsistencies and edge cases across the browser, we're going to turn to one of my favorite libraries, React Aria. React Aria is a fantastic library created by Adobe. It handles all of those browser inconsistencies and edge cases for you, including mobile devices. And best of all, React Aria is a headless library. Everything it does is through hooks. This allows us to bring our own DOM and our own look and feel to implement it in the way we want to. So for our button, we're going to use a couple of the React Aria hooks, wire them all together, and then you'll be able to play with it and see the difference. For me, I see a huge difference on mobile and it makes everything, no matter what browser you're on, feel really tight and totally accessible. To get started, go ahead and install React Aria into your project. This here is the final code from the intermediate button, and a lot of this is going to stay the same. What we're going to do is we're going to add in the hooks and then use the hooks and the properties that they expose to change our Tailwind CSS and how it targets the properties. For example, instead of using the focus visible to show the ring, we're going to use a property that is managed by React Aria to show the state or not. The great thing here is, is we don't have to write a lot of code and we don't have to change a lot of code. So let's dive in. The three states we want to manage with React Aria are the button state and if it's pressed or not, hover state, and the focus visible state. React Aria has hooks for all three of those, so we're going to start there and wire it up. We're going to define our own ref, so we're going to go ahead and rename this to forwarded ref. And then we can define our own ref and then we can do use button. Use button wants to have the properties for the button and it's going to add some of its own and it also will take a reference to the button. Because we want to pass through all the properties verbatim, we're going to destructure the things we need and keep a reference to the full properties. Here, React Aria wants a slightly different set of properties than just a regular button takes. So we'll change what the user is allowed to pass in, and then we can pass it straight to this hook. There, now we have specifically the Aria button props which contain specific ARIA properties 
that the hook expects. You can read the documentation for the use button hook and see exactly what it controls, but it will let us know when the button is pressed or not. We have to implement additional hooks to know when it's being hovered and what the focus visible state is as well. Now that we have all of these properties, we have to add them to our button. Now you could either destructure each one in, or you can merge all of these properties and then spread them in all at once. In Adobe's React Aria library, they have a great method called merge props that they use in their component library to merge all these properties together and make sure things like IDs are set consistently and callbacks are chained appropriately. So, for what we have going on right here, I just went ahead and copied their code and added it into our project. We're also going to need something for merging refs. Because the user passes in potentially a ref here, and we define our own reference, we have to merge those together. Again, I've borrowed some code from the internet to create a function that will merge those together. There are libraries that will let you do this if you feel more comfortable installing a third-party library. I like to keep my code light and to have small utility functions like this just baked into the project. We don't need to pass in the original properties because those are going to be referenced in the button props here for the use button hook. Now that we have our hook set up, we want a way for Tailwind to know when it should apply the hover state or the focus within state or the pressed state. Instead of relying on the CSS pseudo states to do that, we're going to use the React hooks here, which take care of all of those edge cases and use them instead. A great way to do this is going to be using data properties and add them to the button. The data property will be like data-pressed and it's going to show if the button is pressed or not by setting it to true or false. Tailwind has great support for targeting these states so we can add those attributes to the button and then simply reference it in our Tailwind code. All right, now that our button's been wired up, we can go back to our CSS and change things that use the pseudo CSS classes to use these data attributes instead. So that's going to be pressed, hover, and focus visible. So here, instead of doing hover, shadow, mid, we're gonna have the same CSS, but we're gonna do data, hover, true, and we're gonna set the background color when that is true. And then for each of the ring attributes, we're going to target the ring focus visible state. And then lastly, instead of the focus state here, we're also going to target the is pressed state. So now we just need to run through and update each of the other variants. When we're using these components, remember, the interface for them didn't change except for the button, instead of being on click, is on press. The one problem that we can see here immediately is that our disabled buttons aren't disabled. That's because React Aria looks for the is disabled key and we're passing in disabled. So to fix this, we can pull out disabled here.
and make sure that the button is marked as disabled when the user passes in disabled or if the button is loading. There's always something. So now we can see that our buttons are correctly disabled, but the next problem is that when you hover over them, the data hovered attribute becomes true, and that overrides the other styles for the disabled because it's more specific. So the best way to handle this case is to say when a button is disabled, mark those specific attributes as important. That way they won't be overridden by the more specific CSS selector. So here, instead of saying disable background indigo, mark it as important. And now you can see it's correctly not applying those styles and we'll have to do it for the other variants as well. All right. Now we can take a look at these buttons and what React Aria has fixed for these edge cases. First of all, when we apply the focus visible state with the ring, the button no longer gets smaller. It's now appropriately the same size and showing the state. And when we click it, that state doesn't appear either, which is fantastic. We only want it to show up when someone's using the tab key and keyboard navigation. Second, when you click the button, it no longer is going to pop up a context menu to be like, hey, do you want to select the text? That's what happened on a mobile device before, but now it doesn't select the text and try to define something like it did before. Also, you'll notice that when you hover and then click and move the mouse off, it goes back to its unpressed, unhovered state. This is how native buttons work on iOS and Android, and it's how you want your buttons to work here. This way your app just feels better. It has a better look and feel, and it applies the experience more consistently. Here we're disabling the button when it's loading, which is most likely what you want when you're submitting a form, but if you don't want that, you can go back to the code and remove this or loading state, and then it won't be disabled when it's loading. And there you have it. That's basically all you have to do to make your button totally consistent and a great user experience across every browser and every platform. React Aria does all of the heavy lifting for us. And now you have a fantastic button that you can use throughout your application that has a great look and feel. As always, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and like, subscribe, drop a comment below if you think of anything. I think this is basically the best button you could possibly make, but let me know if I missed something or if you want to see something slightly different. Until next time, happy coding.